are three ways to save for retirement. And here to talk with us about one of the most underutilized ways is Amy Shepard from Sensible Money. Amy, welcome. Hi, Bob. Pleasure to have you. A pleasure to have you talk about a subject that we actually haven't covered much about yet. Well, I am glad to do it. It is an important topic that I cover in pretty much every financial plan that I do. So um, I am happy to talk through some of the benefits. So um, as you mentioned, Bob, you know, there's really three buckets when it comes to tax savings. Uh, Pre-tax is the one most people are familiar with, you know, funding a 401k and paying tax later when you do withdrawals. Uh, The Roth bucket is the tax-free bucket that is uh, growing in popularity and understanding. And then the last bucket that we're going to talk about is taxable brokerage savings. And so I have uh, mapped out five different ways that I typically help clients use their brokerage assets to structure their financial plan in a way that makes most sense for them. So, All right. The, so uh, we're eager to have you walk us through these uh, these five benefits. Yes. Yeah, so in no particular order, um, you know, one of the common ways that brokerage assets can be um, helpful in a retirement plan is managing your modified adjusted gross income when it comes to qualifying for what's known as premium um, health care premium tax credits. So, you know, many people retire before they're Medicare eligible and they don't have retiree medical, so they need to find their own health insurance. If you have taxable brokerage assets, it could be a really useful tool in managing your income in a way that qualifies you to receive subsidies to help cover the cost of health care through healthcare.gov. That's a big one. All right. And and typically you would do that by taking advantage of the zero tax rate on your capital gains? You can take advantage of the 0% tax rate on capital gains. It also allows you to avoid having to take IRA withdrawals. Um, and so, you know, IRA withdrawals are typically 100% taxable. And so all of that taxable income flows through to your tax return, where with brokerage assets, if it's just minimal interest or 0% capital gains that you're using, or a, a longer term approach like we use, which is uh, using a bond ladder that's built out many years in advance, those are all all ways to help limit what flows through to your tax return and, and qualify you for some of those tax credits. Right. So that's uh, for folks who are pre-Medicare. What about for folks that um, are uh, on Medicare? So another another great uh, benefit to having the taxable brokerage assets is anyone who is you know near or already in the, the Medicare eligibility range, are for, they're familiar with something called IRMA. So it stands for Income Related Monthly Adjustment Amount. And basically what happens is, you know, based on your income, you may be subject to higher Medicare premiums. But if you have taxable brokerage assets, you could do some of the strategies we just talked about to be strategic minimize your income that flows through to your tax return to help you stay in those lower brackets and you know ultimately pay lower medicare premiums all right and uh, what about for folks that are thinking about roth ira conversions so roth ira conversions i think many people are familiar with them but they don't necessarily know all the ins and outs and um, one of the you know big uh, benefits to roth conversions to really maximize the benefit is to pay the taxes with after tax money and so yes you know you can do a conversion and pay the taxes out of the ira that you're converting from but for the the most bang for your buck, as they say, having those taxable brokerage assets to pay the taxes is ideal. And so that's one strategy that we test with clients as well. If you have the brokerage assets to pay the taxes, it allows you to limit the amount of taxes that you're paying, um, both upfront and you know potentially over your lifetime. Right. And if you have a taxable account, there's some potential tax savings for your heirs. There are. So yes, um, there's been some new rules in the. Uh, Uh, in a lot of ways when it comes to taxes. But one of the big ones recently is when somebody inherits a um, retirement account, whether it's a traditional IRA or a Roth IRA or a 401k, um, you know, they have 10 years now to deplete that account. When somebody inherits taxable brokerage assets, there are no 10-year requirements. There are no there's no requirements at all to take that money out at any point. And there is also something called a step up in basis, which just means that the person who inherits those brokerage assets, they inherit it based on the value it's at the day they inherited it, rather than the value of, you know, when the initial um, person purchased the securities in those accounts. And so that can add up to uh, sufficient tax savings over time as well. 
Yeah. So you just hinted at some of the flexibility that comes with having a taxable account. Talk more about some of the other flexible things that come with it. Some of the other things, one of the big ones, something that uh, we work with a lot of clients on at Sensible Money is the uh, ability to retire early. And so, um, you know, a lot of people are diligent savers and they get to, you know, their early or mid fifties and they say, you know what, I, I think I'm ready. I think I can do this. But then they maybe forgot about some of the age limitations that come with, you know, 401k plans and IRAs, um, you know, 401k plans, you can tap at age 55 without penalty, but IRAs, um, you, you can't until 59 and a half. So for those who in early retirement is something they want to do, the taxable brokerage accounts are, are really key in helping make that a reality because there are no age limitations. You know, it's something that can help bridge the gap from if, say, you retire at, you know, 53 or 54 or 56, whatever it is, um, you know, you can use the, the brokerage assets until you get to 59 and a half or um, whatever, whatever those other requirements are to tap true retirement accounts. Right. So the last big benefit is for folks who might have a Roth IRA and a taxable account. Yes. And so one of the kind of, you know, when I when I go through all these things, I, I've had people say before, oh, well, you know, I don't need a brokerage account to do that. I, I have a Roth account. The Roth has all these long term tax benefits, which is very true. Um, but one of the added benefits of the taxable brokerage account is that it gives you the ability to let your Roth sit and you know, potentially grow and have that tax-free growth compounded for an even longer period of time. So we typically like to reserve the Roth assets for use, you know, last in line. And so that that's the a way to get more out of the tax-free withdrawals. All right, Amy. So we covered a lot of ground. Anything we missed or anything that just bears reemphasizing? I think the most important thing is just diversification is always key, whether it's, um, you know, investments or tax diversification. So having eggs in different buckets uh, just opens the doors to be able to map out different strategies depending on your goals. All right. Uh, Amy, always a pleasure having you share your knowledge and wisdom with our viewers. It's uh, greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bob.